Now, the age of gene therapy is fast approaching. Doctors first started trying to heal genetic disorders back in 1990. Three and a half decades later, they can now chalk up success stories, like K.J. Muldoon, a baby boy born with a rare life-threatening metabolic disorder caused by a faulty gene. A cutting-edge therapy targeting the defect appears to have dramatically helped the little patient, and doctors are hopeful the results will last. Hundreds of millions of people around the world suffer from genetic disorders that might soon be fixable. Here's how it works. The DNA in the human genome is made up of billions of what are called nucleotides. Your body uses specific sequences of them, called genes, to build the many different proteins crucial to life. If a gene is faulty, it presents the wrong instructions, and the protein made from it can be defective, and that can cause a genetic disorder. To heal such diseases, you therefore have to replace or repair faulty genes. Rare genetic diseases collectively affect millions of patients worldwide. So these are not always, they don't always have the same disease, but they all have like a genetic source of these diseases that can potentially be treated with gene therapy or gene editing. Altering a patient's DNA is no simple task. To treat genetic disorders, tailored viruses are often used. They're able to smuggle a correct version of the faulty gene into cells. Once inside the cells, molecular editing tools insert this correct code, replacing the patient's faulty DNA. You can think of gene editing or gene therapy treatments like a microsurgery for your DNA. So even small changes in DNA uh, can lead to a uh, huge effect. I think you can think about it uh, analogous to language. So if you think about a sentence and you change like a single letter uh, in that sentence, it can substantially change the meaning. And the same is true, you know, for protein and DNA sequences. For many gene therapy treatments, a patient's cells are removed and their DNA is edited outside the body or ex vivo. The repaired cells are then returned to it. However, the gene editing components can also be injected directly into the patient, a process called in vivo gene therapy. Both have their own advantages. The advantages of in vivo gene therapy can uh, potentially be its simplicity. So the application can be logistically uh, much simpler than with ex vivo therapies, where first cell stone patients have to be removed, then ex vivo manufactured, and then reinfused into the patient. A groundbreaking in vivo gene therapy treatment helped infant KJ Muldoon, who has a rare condition that would have soon led to brain damage or even death. Researchers have also used the method to try to treat hundreds of other patients for previously untreatable disorders, from sickle cell to Parkinson's to certain kinds of cancer. The gene therapy revolution in medicine has begun. Let's get more on this from Julian Grunewald, who is an assistant professor of gene editing at the Technical University of Munich. Welcome to DW. Um, are we then at a, a tipping point in the development of this gene uh, technology? Thanks for having me. So listen, I think it is very exciting times and there are a lot of developments, as you have just described, that are happening in parallel that are very exciting. But there's still a lot of work to do to really bring these kinds of therapies to many, many more patients than this is possible today. And what sort of diseases or genetic disorders do you see responding well to this sort of technology? Well, there's actually plenty of diseases that have been targeted for now by these kinds of treatments. And actually, if you look at gene and cell therapies globally, um, this is actually a category that has grown a lot, even in the last five to 10 years. There are uh, conventional gene therapy where you bring in a healthy gene with a virus into cells. You can do that in the body, outside of the body. There are uh, therapies where you actually edit your cells and then bring in the cells as cell therapy, or as in the example that you've shown of uh, 
uh, baby KJ, you do the editing directly on DNA in uh, this infant. So there's many different types of diseases that can be targeted as well. Um, for instance, bleeding disorders, uh, certain forms of um, um, uh, hereditary blindness, for instance, and uh, many types of um, anemia, for instance. So there are there's a lot of hope for many different types of diseases, but there's also a lot of diseases we cannot target yet. And sometimes a lot of it has to do with how to bring these therapies into specific tissues within the body. Right. Very expensive, though, uh, isn't it? Um, they often cost hundreds of thousands of, of dollars, even millions for a single patient. Why is it so expensive? Listen, I mean, it is it is extremely complicated to to make these kind of therapies, to conceptualize them, to do the research, right? This this comes up as a therapy now, but it has been in the works, as you said, starting in the early 90s with all these developments. And uh, it, it takes a lot of time to develop these. It takes sometimes hundreds of millions to billions of, of dollars or euros to develop these medicines. And there are a lot of struggling companies who do this, even though these indications are actually you know, uh, not that common, right? Rare diseases in, in many cases. Um, so uh, it is just hard for these companies to, to even survive and to actually really thrive on making these types of medicines. So of course they are expensive initially, but a lot of this has to do with how they can be scaled and, and when they become more mainstream, how they can also be, um, they, there might be different ways to distribute them differently, to deliver them right. differently and make new formulations that are more available for people. Just a quick word on, on the potential downsides. Do, do, are there any sort of um, uh, uh, side effects, uh, bad side effects of using this sort of uh, technology? So when you edit DNA, for instance, in the context of gene editing, you have to think about editing uh, certain sites on DNA in the genome that you don't want to edit. That's called off targets. That would be one thing that is looked out for whenever you make such a new therapy. That is important. But for instance, also sometimes when you bring a new gene into the body with a virus, you can have side effects from that virus, right? The immune system might react to that virus and that can also have severe side effects. Right. Thank you so much for talking us through that. Uh, uh, Julian Grunewald from the Technical University of Munich. Thank you. Thank you.